Hi, this is George Whittem reporting from Whittem's World. This question came in this week from Chris Dovich, one of our clients actually. And he says, I have a question about the Pro Tools software license changes and how it affects voiceover talent users. Avid Pro Tools is changing up all of their licenses and pricing. But looking at this comparison chart, which I'll give a link to below, I wonder if I need to continue to subscribe to the full version of Pro Tools for my use in voiceover. Might a voiceover actor be able to use the Pro Tools first version? This is the free version of Pro Tools they now provide. And still be able to do almost everything we need to do? The only thing I noticed in the chart was that Pro Tools first does not allow to bounce to MP3. Are there any crucial features not in Pro Tools first that would make it difficult to record voiceover properly? What else would I, would I be missing if I downgrade to use the free version of Pro Tools? So let's dig into this Pro Tools first and see if there's any real limitations that would make using it for voiceover actors sessions. Not voiceover production, but a voice actor who's going to record their own voice and just cut and edit and send out files. What are the ups and downs of using first? So once you have Pro Tools first installed, you have to log in. So when you start Pro Tools, it actually asks you for your Avid account user and password. I did that. It took a good two or three minutes to log in. I have no idea why, but eventually it took me to this screen. Now, we don't need to work from a template. In fact, actually, the templates that they include, none of them are really particularly relevant, um, except maybe podcasting. We could try podcasting. Let's go ahead and give that one a shot. Normally, I would probably start with a fresh project of my own, but we'll give this a We'll try this. Instead of calling it podcasting, we'll call it voiceover one. All right, create. So let's see what shows up in a podcasting session. All right, well, interestingly, Pro Tools first has quit. It crashed. Okay, so we'll send that crash log to Avid. And maybe we'll give it another go. I have Pro Tools 12 on this system and it does work fine. So I'm not sure what the culprit is. Let's give it another shot here. Pro Tools first. Just started it back up again. This is the part where it signs into your Avid account. I signed in once before and told it to remember me. So it's a lot faster this time, apparently. Still loading, still scanning plugins. I have a pretty fast machine too. I have a quad core i7 Mac mini and I use an SSD for the drive, which is very, very fast. So this is about as fast as you're probably gonna expect it to load on your system. All right, shall we try it again? Create from podcasting, let's call it voiceover one, create. Project with that name already exists. Okay, so I guess it did actually work. We'll click open, double click. Cannot download project as it is not available yet. Okay. So that leaves us here. Let's go to, well, we just did open project and that didn't work. Or did it? No, that didn't work. Okay. So let's try create new project again. This time, let's not create from a template. Let's create our own, our own and call it voiceover two. Okay, now Pro Tools open like normal. So this is looks just like Pro Tools 12 so far. I do a few quickie things to just modify the way it looks. I'd rather see things measured in minutes and seconds because we're not doing music with bars and beats. And setup, let's go to playback engine. Playback engine, that's where I want to choose my hardware. Okay, let's do that. It's going to restart the project again. Now, I see that it can only record in 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, okay? That's probably not a problem for most everybody. Occasionally, you may need to do something at a different sample rate, in which case you can't do it with the software. You can convert it, though, so there's a workaround. Optimize engine for recorder playback. Uh, I would say let's optimize it for playback. Um, because we don't want it to, now nah, let's try record. The fact that they even ask you this question tells me that the software is not quite as user-friendly as it could be.
All right, now that we're back up again, let's go back to Playback Engine, make sure it's still set to the Onyx. I'll leave it optimized for recording because we don't want to have any recording glitches, that's for sure. Now we need to have a track. New track. I usually make a couple of tracks. I usually have like two or three audio tracks and I usually have maybe two auxiliary inputs. And I usually make a mic input track and I usually have a, a uh, preamp quote unquote track, which is like my, what I would do to my audio as it comes into the system. Choose my interface input, input one. Check, check, check. Okay, it's alive. Uh, we want to bus that output to our preamp track. That would be bus one. There we go. Aha, now we're getting monitoring. I'm going to switch to headphones because we don't want to hear uh, the speakers feeding back. So we'll do that. And we'll, uh, let's see, let's route the preamp to another track. So we'll do that by using another bus, bus two. And we'll call this track record track. There's a lot of ways to set up Pro Tools. This is just one of my more uh, recent workflows that I've preferred to use. Okay, and then if I record enable, one, one two, two, three, four, four five, five, I have the recording, recording track enabled. And, and we, we have, have track input monitor. monitor. We actually have the ability to turn the monitoring of the input on and off. That's a new feature, brand new feature actually. That is not in Pro Tools 12, I believe. So that's interesting, okay? I do see it has automation, which voice actors never really need, but it has it. So it does have a few powerful features in it. Let's go through other menu items. We have an export audio mix. Let's see what's in the audio suite. I see that we have um, EQ. We have a one and a seven band, the seven band by far the most important one. And it's a full featured EQ, so that's good. We have a few dynamics tools, but the important ones are there. The compressor, the de-esser, and the expander. All those are very powerful and helpful tools for producing voiceover, and they're there. Pitch shift, we don't care about. Reverb, we really don't care about delay. We don't care about either. And then under other, we've got normalize, which we'll need. We have gain, which we often will need too. So it looks like the basic tools that I would normally use in Pro Tools are available to us in the audio suite. So that's a good sign. So far, so good. We're looking good. So let's go ahead and record some audio and see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're using Pro Tools first today to record some audio. Let's see now, once I'm finished recording, what uh, the workflow is to get this audio back out of Pro Tools and out into the real world. Okay, is there a clips list? Yep, there is a clips list. So the audio I'm recording is being stored somewhere. If I right click on that, I can export clips as files and send them right to my hard drive. Okay, well, that's a good sign. Okay, so the, the audio is being recorded and stored as standard WAV files. So that's great, but you can't export to anything but WAV or AIFF. You cannot export to MP3. Okay, so there's there's one catch, as, as Chris did mention before. You cannot export directly to MP3 in Pro Tools first. But you can get little apps, you can get a utility like an, uh, a utility called Switch that will convert to MP3. It's just having to do that extra step all the time. Why bother? Well, it's good to see that you can still export. Let's see about another very important part of Pro Tools, in my opinion, and that is the ability to take processing you've added to a track, and then let's say we want to have some basic processing. I'll often start with a high pass filter. Okay, one, two, let's see. I'll usually do something like this. This is not going to be precise. This is just for demonstration. I'll have a high pass. I'll often have um, a compressor. One, two, something like this. I'll often have a gate, expander gate. Check, check, check. 
not configured like that, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, and I will usually have a limiter. There is no limiter included, so I will use my compressor as a limiter. I'll use brick wall as a, well, let's do hard limiting. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's gonna work like a limiter. Step back, let's take a listen. We're using Pro Tools first today to record some audio. I forgot to, to normalize, normalize this. I always normalize to minus three before I process. So I'm gonna go normalize, minus three, render. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're using Pro Tools first today to record some audio. Let's see now, once I'm finished recording, what uh, the workflow is to get this audio back out of Pro Tools and out into the real world. So the processing works the way I expected to, so that's good. Everything looks relatively good so far. Now, let's get it back out of Pro Tools. Now, this processing is inserted on a channel. So in order for this processing to get added to this track, it has to be exported or bounced. You Actually, it has to be bounced. If you export this using Shift-Command-K, you will not get the processing, okay? So we have to get it through the processing, and we have to do that through the export menu item, audio mix. In Pro Tools 12, it's called bounce. Here they call it audio mix. Audio mix. Very important to always choose. Oh, look at that. It only allows you to bounce in stereo. Okay, so that's a little bit annoying. We do not we do not want to send out our voiceover stuff in stereo. So that is definitely an inconvenience. Okay, let's do you can't do mono summed, because if you do mono summed, you will get two mono files stacked on top of each other, thereby doubling the volume and causing clipping. So leave it in multiple mono. I'll do 16 bit. Ah. Now that it's been recorded, it lets you export to different sample rates. Very interesting. Okay, and we're gonna tell it where to go. So we'll put it into, call this test session. It's gonna go into the test session folder. And the very, very important function that they do give you is offline bounce. Why is it so important? Because without offline bounce, you have to wait for the file to be played back in real time. It could take 10 minutes, an hour. It just depends on how long the audio file is. All right. So let's go take a look at that file. Let's go look in this. It, it makes a default folder in your documents folder, which is kind of a weird place. So hopefully your documents folder is in a place with enough drive space. And... The audio that got recorded to the drive, all these things that are clips, where are they? Reveal in Finder. They are in a folder called Audio Files, which is in turn hidden underneath a weird, bizarre temp folder project inside another temp folder inside the project cache folder inside Pro Tools, inside Documents. Okay, so... That's where the actual audio file is stored in the process of recording. Very interesting. So you gotta make sure that your documents folder is on a system drive with enough space on it for recording. Can't record to an external drive. So let's go to a test session and look. Okay, so there's your, there's your workaround for the whole left, uh, you know, uh, mono issue. It records a left and a right when it's bounced out because we chose not to use interleaved. Remember when we chose multiple mono? So what we do is just simply throw out one of the files. I'm gonna open it up in Twisted Wave, my usual editor, take a look and a listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're using Pro Tools first today to record some audio. Okay, well that seems to have worked fine. If you're on Mac, of course you can drag it into iTunes and use that to convert. You could install Audacity and use that to convert. You know, there's a lot of ways you could convert this to an MP3. But there's just a few extra steps involved to get to your final product. So now that the session's done, what happens next, right? Well, how do we 
get back to where we are next time we want to record. So if I just quit Pro Tools, the session can be saved. Let's go ahead and save. Ah, now this is another area where Pro Tools first differs dramatically from Pro Tools 12. You have to wait for the stuff to be transferred to the cloud. Yes, that's right. Everything you do is stored temporarily on your hard drive in that weird folder I was showing you, and then gets backed up to the cloud. So imagine doing an audiobook in Pro Tools first with hundreds of minutes of audio all uncompressed. It's going to take a really long time to save your project when you're done at the end of the day. Really long time. So that is definitely a negative, I would say. Let's see how we get back into the session again. We'll go ahead and start up Pro Tools first again. Don't know why it takes so long to scan the plugins when it only can load its own default plugins. There aren't that many of them. Shouldn't take that long, but here we go. Open, VoiceOver 2, double click. Takes us back into the session and there we go. So it's a pretty popular thing to not make a new session for every single session recording that you do. It's a pretty popular thing to just keep a session that you recycle over and over and over and just flush uh, the clips out of the session uh, on a weekly basis to kind of clean it out. So the fact that Pro Tools First only allows you to have three sessions stored, it could really cramp your style after a while. Um, you might have to, you might, might be frustrating, especially if you, maybe if you do a lot of audiobooks and you have to have multiple audiobook productions stored that you're working on. Once you hit three, you're going to be out of, out of luck. So that could be frustrating. Um, but you know, I think, uh, if you're really on a budget and you really want to use Pro Tools, Pro Tools first could work for you. It seems to be working okay here. Just a few little uh, bugs getting it up and running, but it seems to be working normally here on my Mac Mini running OS 10.9.5. That's the last version of Mavericks. So so there you have it. There's Pro Tools first. It's functional. Would I choose it as my first choice? No, but it definitely works. And it does have some good processing tools on board for sure. Well, this has been George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. I thank you, Chris Dovich, for sending in that question. It's something that's needed to be unearthed for a while, so I'm happy to have talked about it a bit today. If you guys have any feedback on that, please do leave comments below. I really appreciate it. I do read and reply to comments in my YouTube videos. If you have an idea for a future Whittem's World, send it on in to whittemsworld at edgestudio.com, and I'll take it into a future episode. It could even be an idea for a product review, which I'm going to have a few product reviews coming up in December. Looking forward to that. And you can also get hold of me through vostudiotech.com for anything tech-related, tech support-related. If you need help with a studio problem or you need to design a studio or just learn how to build your first own studio setup, that's where you get a hold of us. And you can call in at the mothership in New York City at 212 212- 868 Edge for questions about our education department or production. Thanks a lot for listening. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving holiday and I'll see you guys in December. Take care.